Alright, yeah, and welcome back on into some more Magic Arena. So, this week we are back again with Budget Week, and we are going to be showcasing Burning Blood. So, Burning Blood is a red black burn list, and actually, this one is a little special as far as uh, Budget Week's concerned because it actually includes a sideboard into the budget, which actually does mean that the main board does get a little bit hurt because of the uh, the budget restriction as it was, but uh, it does actually include a lot of interesting things in there to make sure that you are suitably set up for the long game on future matchups. So, let's go through it, shall we? The reason why you play black in a burn deck, because that might seem strange to some, is because of things like Sovereign's Bite. So, one and a black, Sorcery Speed, target player loses three life, and you gain three life. So, it's essentially like a Wizard's Lightning, except for I gain three life, which is actually a six-point life swing, if you think about it that way. Um, the life gain can often buy you an extra turn if you need it, um, which does almost, in a weird way, make it better than Lightning Strike, so really solid card out of M19. We're also running Gonti's Machinations as well um, for the mirror matches, the creature-based decks and things like that. One black for an enchantment, it says whenever you lose life, for the first time each turn, you gain one energy. Then you can pay two energy to sacrifice Gonti's Machinations. Each opponent loses three life, you gain life equal to the life lost this way, which basically means it's the same as Sovereign's Bite, except for the only way that it gets triggered is either by generating your own energy with things like Ether Hub, or by taking damage over a period of three turns, which isn't difficult at all. Uh, you'll see many occasions when Gonti's Machinations does some serious work, so I'd almost consider having four copies in it, but we do run a few little cards that need um, a little more support than... Um, a fourth copy of Gont Gonti's Machination would maybe allow. We've got the usual Bomac Couriers as well, 1 mana 1-1 one, one with haste, which allows us to get right out the gate, hitting for immediate damage, but it also exiles cards while under it whenever we attack. And the reason it does that is because you can pay red to discard your entire hand, sacrifice Bomac Courier, which is not too much of a problem, because it's a 1-1, one, one, and you're happy to get rid of it, especially since you get to put all the cards exiled with Bomac Courier into your hand at that point. So you can empty your hand, swing with Bur Bomac Courier, pay one red, refill your hand. And that is basically all the resources that you need to win the game quite a lot of the time. The problem with it is, is there's a lot of things in this format that are turn one, one ones, and also turn two, one threes and things like that. So often you can get a little bit of a roadblock with Bomac Courier, and you might need to expend a Wizard's Lightning or something like that just to clear the way. Um, but other than that, it is a solid card. It's pretty much the reason why I'm not running four copies of it. Uh, also for Flame of Keld synergies as well. It doesn't really synchronize too well with that. We've got Gitu Lava Runner, which is a one mana one two. And it says, as long as there are two or more instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard, Gitu Lava Runner gets plus one plus oh and haste, which means on turn two, as soon as turn two, we can actually be swinging in with a 2-2 with haste. And the, re the way that we actually enable that is by doing damage. So we could actually be swinging for uh, uh, upwards of about eight damage on turn two if we get the right hand. So we can do some serious damage with Gitu Lava Runner as well. Similarly, we've got Soul Scar Mage. The problem with Soul Scar Mage is he doesn't have haste. However, he does have prowess, which means that he makes up for it in other ways. He compensates. One mana for a 1 2 with prowess. So, whenever you cast a non creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn, which means Soul Scar Mage gets real fat real quick. So, non creature spells do include Gonti's Machinations, Flame of Kelds, Burn Spells, and Planeswalkers. So, virtually everything in the deck actually triggers. Soul Scar Mage, so we can pretty much almost add an extra point of damage to the board whenever we use Soul Scar Mage. He does have an added ability as well. Um, if a source would deal non combat damage to a creature and opponent controls, then you actually do a replacement effect and put that many 1 1 counters on it instead, which means it's permanent burn damage in that sense. It won't come up too much in these matches, but in future games, then it helps you take care of. Uh, indestructible creatures and things like that because you permanently reduce um, and neuter their power by just removing their power and toughness that way. Four copies of Shock is a one red mana deal two damage to any target, so a nice cheap burn spell, pointing two damage, which is usually enough to enable Gitu Lava Runner, pump up Soul Scar Mage, so this two damage usually isn't something that is uh, just two damage in the end. 
We then have V.I. Shino Pyromancer, so one and a red for a 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, it shocks a player or a planeswalker, essentially. Two damage to a player or a planeswalker, and you get a 2-1 body on the board. It does die to Chain Whirler and things like that, uh, but it actually comes down and it gets value right off the bat, which is really good. It can say that over Soul Scar Mage, which doesn't quite get the value immediately, so... Pyromancer, a solid card, does synchronize with the deck a wee bit as well. We got four copies of Lightning Strike because this is an absolute auto include. In fact, I want Lightning Strike. I want the better. Oops. Lightning. Let's have a Lightning, can I? This is the better art. Get out of here. Get out of here. There we go. Give me that Lightning Hand. So, Lightning Strike deals three damage to any target, one and a red. And we don't really get a cost reduction on this, but two mana for a three damage burn spell in standard is pretty reasonable. After that, we have the Flame of Keld. Now, this uh, this card can either hurt you or help you, depending on the situation and depending what that chapter two ends up doing. So one and a red for a Saga enchantment. The first thing it does is discard your hand. Now, you may notice we're running a lot of cheap stuff. So by the time Flame of Keld comes down, we're usually maybe one card in hand. Most likely, we've got no cards in hand. So that first chapter is supposed to be downside, but it's not really in reality. The second chapter, which happens the following turn, is allows us to draw three car uh, two cards, which means on the turn that we actually get that uh, trigger, we have three cards in hand, which allows us to build up our board state, maybe stockpile burn spells for chapter three, anything of that sort. Chapter 3 says if a red source you would control would deal damage to a permanent or player this turn, it deals that much damage plus 2 to that permanent or player instead, which is virtually doubling damage for a, quite a lot of cards in our deck. So the reason why I'm not running 4 copies of Bomat Curry is mostly because it doesn't actually get a benefit from Flame of Keld. I'd rather have it in place for red creatures that do that, Pyromancer, Lava Runner, Soul Scar Mage, things like that, so that's one reason to do. This deck is very tweakable. I wouldn't say it's perfect by any stretch of the imagination, so by all means, tweak away and try to uh, improve the deck as you will. Maybe you've got a better budget than I've set myself. Who knows? Sword Point Diplomacy is an interesting one. Otherwise, unplayable deck outside of any other um, budget list on this one. So you can probably cut this one if you want to use your rares elsewhere. Uh, but in fact... Like, Soul Scar Mage is a good uh, alternative if you don't want to invest your wild cards into a otherwise useless card outside of this deck. But in this deck, it's really good. Uh, maximum 9 points of damage for 3 mana. Uh, but other than that, it's a draw 3. So, 2 and a black sorcery speed. Reveal the top 3 cards of your library. For each of those cards, put that card into your hand unless your opponent pays 3 life. So, if they pay 3 life, then it gets exiled. Um, otherwise, it goes into your hand. The thing with Sword Point Diplomacy is, unless it's revealing a land, it's most likely going to reveal a card that's going to deal three damage anyway. Wizard's Lightning deals three. Lightning Strike deals three. Sovereign's Bite deals three. Pyromancer is two damage with a, an extra body attached to it. The, everything represents three damage or more for the most part. So your opponent likely can't win with the pay three or exile the card so it's a really solid card honestly you might even want to put extra cards in here just for the card advantage alone it is pretty sweet following that we have four copies of wizard's lightning this is two and a red however this spell costs two less to cast if you control a wizard and if that is the case it is a one mana uh lightning strike it's technically a lightning bolt if any of you are modern aficionados. Wizard's lightning deals 3 damage to any target for 1 mana. It is solid, solid value. Tops the lightning strike by a country mile and of course by the shock as well. So as far as wizards are concerned, yet again another reason why I'm not running a playset of couriers because they're not wizards. However, lava runners are wizards. Soul scar mages are wizards. Pyromancers are wizards. And I mean Chandra's She's a, an honorary wizard, but she's not. Um, so essentially, there's a lot in our deck that can actually enable wizard's lightning, especially like on turn two. As I mentioned, the straight out the gate Gitu Lava Runner uh, eight point life swing uh, is enabled kind of with uh, wizard's lightnings and shocks uh, for the most part, because you do need two 
uh, one mana spells in order to make that happen is very much possible since we do run a fair amount of cards to enable that. Finally, got two copies of Chandra Torch of Defiance just to top off that curve to get the extra little bit of value in. Two and two red for a four loyalty planeswalker. You can tick up one to exile the top card of your library. You either cast that card or if you choose not to, it deals two damage to each opponent. So if we exile the top card and it's a land, it's going to deal two damage to our opponent, which just means hitting a land is like a shock. If it is not two damage to our opponent, we could choose to pay for it and do up to three damage, maybe even more, depending on if it's a creature and we think we can get the damage in. We've got to do the math. Uh, burn and red decks in general are all about maximizing damage over a long period of time. It's almost chess-like. Most people think that the deck is very simple to pilot. That is absolutely, uh, completely incorrect. While there are games that are very goldfishy uh, with burn decks, it's not really the case most of the time. And you can say that about every deck, to be honest, that it doesn't take much to pilot. Because some decks, you know, you play a game, nobody's got any lands, you know, you might as well be playing by yourself. It's kind of the same thing with burn but it happens more consistently, let's say. The second ability allows you to add two red mana to your mana pool. So on turn four, we could actually add two red mana and maybe lightning strike our opponent or play two lava runners and a soul scar mage or something like that. Um, there are plenty of ways to do that. So even if we don't want to exile the top card of our library for that two points of damage, if we want to maximize damage over a long period of time, we can tick up for the mana to add to our board, which will ultimately increase the amount of damage that we can deal. Maybe Chandra's the last card and Flame of Keld is right next to it. So we play Chandra, we tick up to red, play Flame of Keld, discard nothing. And then Chandra also gets a trigger from the Flame of Keld as well because she is a red source. So her tick up will actually deal four points and her minus three will deal eight if we need to move a creature out of the way. Her minus seven is something that is achievable though uh, the game is likely to be over before we get there. Uh, minus seven says you get an emblem whenever you cast a spell. This emblem deals five damage to any target. So it automatically turns like things like shock into seven point damage, uh, wizard's lightning into something disgusting, eight points in total. You can see where this one goes, but the cast trigger is all that you really need. So unless your opponent's running a disallow, even if they counter the spell, five damage is still coming their way. So it pretty much just turns everything into a live kill spell at that point. The banner base, uh, I've stretched the budget a little bit just to make this one work. We are running four copies of Dragon Skull Summit. Uh, you can absolutely just switch these out for an extra ether hub uh, if you wanted to do that and just go with the uh, swamps and mountains. Uh, I've chosen to just go with the swamps, uh, the Dragon Skull Summits because I like dual lands. But yeah, you can swap these out for an ether hub all the same. Maybe even a tap land though. You do want to get out of the gate quite early so I would maybe argue against that one but basics are just fine on their own so five swamps eight mountains four dragon skull summits and an ether hub the energy allows you to enable gonti's machinations a little early gonti's machinations allows you to refill the energy on your ether hub so there's a lot of synergy there um trick with the gonti's machinations is that you should use this at the last possible moment because up until you use it it will be generating you energy to make sure that these ether hubs are uh, dual colored lands so that's something to keep in mind. If you're not running uh, Dragon Skull Summits, I might even consider going for the fourth Machinations if you're going for the fourth Ether Hub, just to make that one work out. So for the sideboard, uh, we are including a lot of cards that allow us to either go for a late game against uh, decks that maybe are quite annoying. So if they're annoying decks, then we've got Rekindling Phoenix, which is a hard to deal with threat. Two mana and two red for a 4-3 with flying. Whenever it dies, you create an 0-1, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, you sacrifice that 0-1, and you get your 4-3 back with haste. So it's really, really obnoxious for your opponent to deal with. It requires a 2-4-1, essentially. It doesn't have haste or anything like that, which would be nice, but being able to just annoy your opponent and keep something, some threat on the board is very nice with a rekindling phoenix. Also for control decks, we have a copy of Banefire in here. Uh, red and an X. This could go into the main board if you're going with the best of one. Banefire deals X damage to any target, so however much you want to pay for it, that's how much damage it's going to do. However, if it is five or more, then that spell cannot be countered and the damage cannot be prevented. And in a turbo fog uh, world, then the damage prevention, however irrelevant since it is a burn spell, is kind of 
just there all the same. This deck will absolutely eat up Turbo Fog, by the way, because they have plenty of dead cards, and none of their fogs uh, actually reduce Wizard's Lightning damage or anything like that. So they can fog your Lava Runners and your Soul Scar Mages, but you're firing Shocked Lightnings, things like that, at your opponent, so they can't really deal with that kind of stuff. We have four copies of Hungry Flames, because this uh, card, while it is solid, it doesn't really do anything unless your opponent is playing a creature-based matchup, which is why it actually resides in the sideboard. If you're playing a creature-based matchup, this, hand, this card gets so much better. Three damage to any creature, kills a lot of stuff. Uh, Chain Whirler comes to mind in the mirror match, um, things like that. And then it deals two damage to target player or planeswalker as well, so you're removing something from your opponent's board, and you're hitting them and clearing the way for your creatures. It is a solid card. However, if you're in a control matchup, it is a completely dead card and you will never want to see it, which is why it is in the sideboard. We've got three copies of a braid to deal with artifacts. Also, yet again, creature removal, the three damage there. And then we have three copies of fatal push as well, just in case we want to be removing it. So the sideboard is basically bring in the creature removal package and control package so that's going to be the deck i'm going to run through a few games with you guys i'm going to do best of one because i like this quick format for you guys but uh if you'd like to see uh an unbudgeted version of this in best of three then i'll be happy to do that let me know down in the comments below other than that consider liking subscribing for more budget decks in the future and i will see you in the games All right, we have turn one courier, turn two machinations and shock. That's all right, I suppose. On the draw, less than ideal if my opponent can lead off where they play there. He does not, and we get a Sovereign's Bite, which is awesome. Sovereign's Bite, six point life swing, always nice. It's like a lightning strike, except for it buys us an extra turn on occasion as well. The cost? Sorcery speed. Blue, white. If this is uh, turbo fog, we're going to be laughing all the way home. All right. I'm not in the slightest bit concerned about losing my courier here because we've got a handful of gas. So I'm just going to swing. The reason not to swing would be uh, seal away next turn. I don't care. We ain't got time for that. Um, pass, end step, shock him if he wants to counter out on his turn. That's good for me. Okay, shock your face. Down to 16. All right. Uh, we can't quite get our hand empty enough for Bomac Courier to come out on top hand-wise. Which uh, is less than ideal. I would have loved a wizard by now, so this wasn't a three-mana lightning strike. Well, we will swing. Maybe should have Sovereign's Bite there, actually. Then I could trade three for three, though. Do I really care when... There's as much damage as there is in my hand right now. Alright, Sovereign's Bite. I'd imagine I'm more likely to actually get worse cards off of that three than I am my three in hand. Opponents at 12. It's going to have to start countering some stuff pretty soon. Because he's going to die to all of these burn spells. If he doesn't. Down to ten. Okay, swing again. This time, yeah, we're either getting settled or sealed away. <laughs> we're getting settled for a 1-1, one -one, that's pretty great. Blink of an eye. Okay, so lightning strike face. And just get three new cards. 
Stop him from drawing a card as well. Lava Runner is online. So we can play that. Then we got Chandra next turn. I imagine he's low enough on life that he wants to answer this Lava Runner. So we might be able to tap him out long enough to resolve this Chandra. Settle the wreckage. Yep, that's what we want. Okay, yeah, I'll go get a land. Uh, we've got enough black now. We'll go get that, and we'll slap down Chandra. We cycled away that cast out because he didn't want to deal with little, little niggling turn. problems. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Incoming big niggling problem. Can he deal with it? If not, there's a good chance we just win next turn. To fairy, okay. Minus on Chandra. I'm known for my excellent time. Let's take it back. That's my opponent not drawing cards. Okay, so we will sword point diplomacy. Ugh, that was actually pretty grim. Selection there. Decides to take the damage. Okay, well. We're going to Flame of Keld, get rid of Chandra, which is not great, but we do draw three cards. He's going to need enough counters for me to not kill him here, and that's going to be we need to move quickly. probably unreasonable of blue-white control to be able to do. Unless he can bounce it. If he's bouncing it, he's spending mana, which I can then replay it. Hmm. We'll see. That looks like a good enough concession to me. There's Soulscar. Not amazing, but acceptable, I suppose. Still needs answering. Don't tell me you're going to bounce this, because I disallow the trigger. Nice. Alright, well. Soulscar Mage is dealing double damage next turn. So it needs answering. Hold that thought. Unless you got to disallow for the next flame of Kel trigger. Won't rule it out, but it's probably not the best uh, use of resources. Up to three from the fumigate. Okay, if he doesn't have an answer, Chandra's lethal. But he probably has an answer, to be honest. It's blue-white control. Oh! What? My hair is on fire? Good game! <laughs> I know. Unless he's got some sort of disallow here. Cast out! Uh, it's not going to stop the trigger, which is dealing double damage. Oh, oh. Today's my lucky day. Yeah. Alright, taking down blue-white control. It got a bit dicey towards the end there, uh, but we managed to pull it out in the end. So let's go for another game. Okay. Ooh, double lava runner la hand. Yeah, we can cake. We can take this. Why are we always on the draw? That's the worst. All right, well, Lava Runner, say go. We do want to get these into our yard as soon as possible, really. It's a shock. Okay, well, we're going to swing first. See if my opponent wants to fail to push this Lava Runner, anything of that sort. A braid. All right. Sure. Uh, let's play Lava Runner number two. And I guess we'll slap down Gonti's Machinations. That's going to start generating some energy at some point. And we should be able to make this Lava Runner a 2-2. And get in for a reasonable amount of damage next turn. One would hope. 
Squirly boy. Alright, it's not actually going to stop us. And in fact, it kind of helped us. So, goodbye Whirly boy, he's very annoying. Uh, we do want to shock our opponent's face. Just to get the extra pump in. It's going to take us off of machinations, but we'll get back to it in no time at all. To 16. I'd really love a flame of Keld at this point. Another whirly boy. Okay. Enables machinations. The lava runner. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Well, we can play him down. He's not going to really die to anything our opponent's got in mind, so... Just uh, do that and pass. Then we've got board presence if we manage to get this chain well away from the board. Machinations making sure that these ether hubs are going to be live 24-7. Earth Shaker Kenra. Okay. Yep. Cat block. Wasn't gonna. Wow. Getting in for five. We're getting in for four. So, I mean, we are losing this race, but... We're really losing this race. Because, of course, we're gonna draw our lands. Well, keep playing them. If we get a Flame of Keld, we don't really want to be holding lands in hand. Got to remember that we're on a virtual 16 with Machinations, our opponent on a virtual 9. Scrounger? Yep, not too bothered about that. Can't block, so it's not going to stop our attack. Let's go, get some more energy. Another Machinations, that's 6 points, 8 points, 10, 12. So we got lethal if he doesn't have removal. Swing. Shock face. Machinations. Drain face. And drain face. Screw you, Chain Whirler. Don't need you. Alrighty then. This hand looks fine. We're actually on the play for a change, so... Yeah, not too bad at all. Uh, do we go with Soul Scar Mage or Lava Runner? I guess we go with Soul Scar because it's the one that can never have haste right out the gate. Lava Runner does have the potential for that, so... Let's go Soul Scar. Opponent going to shock away our mage. I guess so. Uh-huh. That is fine. I suppose there's an argument for uh, going Lava Runner in that particular instance since our opponent is going to probably remove the first thing that comes down. We're going to play Lava Runner and we're going to play Machinations. This is going to get us a lot of value uh, throughout this game because our opponent obviously uses a lot of burn spells. So we're going to be getting hit in the face quite a fair bit and triggering this constantly. Hmm. Earthshaker Kenra. Yep. Swings for two. We get some energy. That's quite nice. Okay, play the Ether Hub. I think we're just going to play Sword Point Diplomacy since it's the most uh, expensive card. Ooh, nice. So if he gives us a land, we have Chandra next turn. If he gives us Lava Runner, we've got two, two, two swinging through. see what he chooses to do. He could also just take nine damage. Might take six. Wow, okay. Alright, so let the Bane fire go. It's the only one he was truly afraid of, it seems. We're gonna swing for one. Take him to 16. We have Chandra next turn, who can do some fun stuff, hopefully. The only problem being that Crasher is going to be able to crash her face. 
Okay. Keeping in mind Machinations is constantly representing a six point life swing. So we can go Chandra. Go tick up for red mana. Play Lava Runner. And we're going to Shock Crasher to hopefully keep our Chandra alive next turn. Could keep back one Lava Runner. But I think most of the cards that he's going to play are going to be able to kill Chandra anyway. Mm. Four damage, is that better than potentially, potentially saving Chandra and losing a creature in the process? I think it's not going at our face if he does have the Lightning Strikes, which of course he probably does. Whirly boy. Okay. So, Chandra's not dead. Looks like we had the right idea. So I need something to kill Chain Whirler here, and Chandra's gonna find me. Yep. You're going down. Dang it, Chandra! Dang it! Why you like this? Okay. Hmm. I think, yet again though, there's too much risk involved in trying to save Chandra here. If Chain Whirler goes at her, ugh, Chandra of your own. Well, a minus to kill a creature means that he loses his as well. Yeah, so he's gonna lose his own, his own Chandra. See how he chooses to attack. Gonna take her to one. I don't know what taking her to one really changes. Let me just do the math because he's on seven, six, five, four, three. If we get a single burn spell off the top for three damage, we just win. So yeah, I think we gotta take that chance. No blocks. Let's do this. Uh, any reason to not just shock now? I don't think so. Yeah, let's just shock him now. Gonti's machinations. Okay, so my opponent can't attack me anymore. Or deal damage to me. Because if he deals damage to me, I get enough energy to machinations and kill him. So he has to deal 12 damage in one go. So that the trigger doesn't go off. Oh, today's my lucky day. Harvester. Not going to do it. No life linking happening here. Harvester. I guess if he doesn't attack here and he just yeah suits up his <laughs> suits up his harvesters next turn. Huh. Well, actually, I can just shock myself. I'm going to lose life for the turn. What say you, opponent? You say good game? I say good game, too. Opponent crews in response. Okay. Going through the pointless motions, it seems. Yeah, trigger, trigger. And three to your face. I'm gonna gain life linking response. <laughs> three to your face. I don't, I don't know what zero mana fight spell you've got involved here, but. 
<laughs> Your smart plan to defeat me was shockingly inefficient. Oh yeah. Alright guys, well that's going to do it for today's deck, so I hope I've showcased the deck as uh, effectively as possible. We managed to take down blue-white control and several variations of red deck wins as well. We managed to uh, speed them out. Quite close, I might add, but I mean most red deck wins games I would imagine are going to be quite close anyway. So this deck is built for best of three if you do want to go that route. The budget does actually include the sideboard, so... There's plenty of ways you could actually improve this deck if you want to use the budget elsewhere. Like Soul Scar Mages are a really good upgrade. Uh, maybe a fourth Flame of Keld. If you end up going the uh, creature based route, then Flame of Keld gets a little bit better. I found that sometimes it can be a little ineffective, especially if you just hit like three lands or something like that. Uh, but for the most part, the deck's exactly as it should be, really. Um, you could run one more courier, but it seems to be running just fine with three in my particular case. But it's a really, 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 really fun deck to play around. It's super quick between games as well, and it's very open to tweaks. So I did used to have uh, two if near dead lands in the deck, uh, which would actually be pain lands, which would allow me to trigger Gonti's machinations. I did take them out just to smooth the manner a little bit, uh, but maybe they want to come back in. I'm not quite sure. They are removal on occasion. But also, they're just there to trigger Gonti's machinations and make sure that this goes off as intended. So, anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's budget series. And maybe I'll come back and do something similar in the future as well if you guys really enjoy it. Be sure to like and subscribe to let me know that you do enjoy this series and you want to see more of it. Because I do enjoy making these budget decks, but they are a little hard to come by on occasion, so might not be doing them as frequently as one a day like I've been doing this week so anyway guys like subscribe hit that little bell icon you get notifications when I release videos in the future and I will see you all next time bye bye